Hello everyone and welcome to the CMO Stories podcast, season 2, episode 16. My name is Yuri Bilast, I'm your podcast host and today my guest is Jeff. Hi Jeff, how are you? I'm good. I'm super excited to be here. Talk Web3, NFTs, crypto, blockchain, tech, future, anything. Let's go. Awesome, awesome, man. Yeah, Jeff, you know, people, Jeff is one of the amazing people I met the last few weeks in the Web3 space. So I'm really happy to have him on my podcast. But if you don't know Jeff, Jeff is a founder of Parachute. It's a business that helps brands build Web3 solutions. He's also the founder of Jump, one of the first marketing communities focused on Web3. He publishes a weekly newsletter focused on this space. And to keep things interesting, he's also collaborator and advisor at Seed Club, a DAO that operates as a social token incubator and accelerator. So yeah, you're quite a busy guy. And I, I you, you can talk a bit more about this gem community and so on. But but my first question would be, Jeff, what inspired you to become a Web3 pioneer and, and to start all, the, all these businesses or communities? Yeah, yeah. I, I think the inspiration mostly comes down to sort of, a I guess, a, a, a core pillar of my life, which is I love to learn. Um, there's actually a, a book uh, that I, a test that I took several years ago, about eight years ago. And I, okay. I, I really, really have held on to the lesson that I learned in the book. The book call is, it's very simple. It's called strength finder 2.0. You can find it on Amazon. Um, but it, it basically, the premise is really find your, your, your top five strengths and then double down on them every time you can. Well, when I took that test, my number one strength uh, is learning. Like that's it. I'm just obsessed with learning. Um, and so as, as the sort of the web two mobile, uh, space matured, it got pretty stale. There wasn't a lot of innovation and any new thing that came out was very, I don't know, just like a step. It wasn't like a leap forward. It didn't blow my mind. It didn't make me sit there and feel like, oh, I don't understand this and I need to dive in and, and like really learn. And so when I came across Web3 um, and specifically NFTs and social tokens, it just seemed like this new treasure trove of endless learning to go down. And once you start, once a learner starts to learn stuff, you just want to learn more. <laughs> Um, and I was just taught, we were just talking before we turned on this podcast in the jump community discord server, we have a resources, uh, forum and I've just spent the last three hours. I got, I was up at six 30 AM it's 9 AM now spent the last three hours filling out tools and resources to build and learn and grow all in the, in the web three space. So th the curiosity of just learning is probably the the core thing that has drove me into the space. And, and it's also what, you know, what keeps me going every day. Well, I see that. So learning gives you the energy because you are already, yeah. you did already a lot of stuff. Your brain was busy and still you are here, you know, with all this excitement and energy, you know, and yeah. it, it, it's still early in the day. You know what my superpower is? Actually, I did also this test, eh, you know, to, to see what is your, your type of personality. It's like connecting with people. <laughs> this yeah. is what I do all the time, connecting okay. with everyone. And that's why uh, people say, how do you, where do you get all these guests for your podcast? And so on. they, they, they just, it. I just, I just connect, you know, and, and when you talk connecting, you think about connecting, you think about learning, then I think I say community. Community is a place where you can connect, where you can learn. And then mm -hmm. we come to your jump community. And when I heard about the jump community, we didn't meet yet because we met in San Diego, but I heard about the jump community beforehand by other people on my podcast. They said, you need to check out the jump community. So, and there I met you. But for people listening to us and they perhaps have, have heard about it, but don't know what it is. Can you explain what is the jump community? Yeah, the jump community is very simple. It, it started with this line and notion of jump into Web3. Um, and specifically, my background is marketing and advertising. That's where I spent the my entire career is in a big agency working on brands like Chick-fil-A, GameStop, Dr. Pepper, um, and doing social and digital strategy. So that's my network. That's my discipline. That's you know my trade, if you will. 
Um, and so as I started to go down this new path, the strategic move for me was, okay, I'm entering a new market, a new technology. Uh, in a lot of ways, it's, it's, it's a new industry category. Of course, the nice thing about certain skills like marketing or accounting or law, you can start to apply and adapt those to these new industries. So that's what I was doing. And the strategic move that I wanted to make was I wanted to start community first especially because I live in Dallas, Texas. It's not the tech capital of anything. Mm -hmm. It's certainly not the crypto or blockchain or Web3 capital. Um, so I really wanted to focus on building my network, um, uh, connecting with other people. And within communities, it's one of the best ways to learn. It's actually, I think, the best way to learn. You can read books, you can listen to podcasts, and that will give you sort of baseline fundamental knowledge that you can have conversations, right? And you can sort of take in information. But then when you want to go to advanced levels, you've got to really battle test what you learn through conversation. You've got to hear other people's opinions. Um, and you really do that when you get when you build relationships and you can do that inside of communities. So jump as a community for marketing and advertising profess professionals. Um, it's built kind of off the back of my network, but now has extended into corners of the world that like go way beyond my network because it's a <laughs> network. Right. Of, it's a network of networks now, right? Like your network is eventually we have a, a way for community members to invite uh, their friends and peers into the community. So now it just basically becomes a network of network that we all get to benefit from to the extent that, you know, you're active because it's sort of one of those things. It's like you just get in what you put out. But that's what Jump is. It's a network of networks of <laughs> of marketing and advertising professionals that care about Web3. And why does it exist? Because it will help. It helps you learn and grow. <laughs> and when you're entering a new industry, you know, you've got to connect with people and you've got to learn and you've got to do, you know, that it's just one of the best ways to operate in an industry. Yeah, I like that it's also so focused and it's not, not like the regular Discord community where you have like yeah. all kinds of weird types and they, they just spam you with all kind of, of stuff, but it's token gated. So perhaps explain a yes. bit more about that. Yeah. So one of the um, strategies that if, if for those people that were around in the early days, and this can just go to any, you know, th this is really like sort of lessons that hopefully anybody can apply to what they're building or their brands. Um, but one of the strategic things that we wanted to do was, okay, we're going to learn about Web3. This is a community for Web3. Uh, you know, in, in the world of, of marketing and advertising. But if we're going to really learn, let's use the tools of the space to operate and run our community. So we can create decks and presentations and podcasts uh, about all this content all day long. And we need that. We have to do it. But when you want to go a step further, then you actually have to do the, the, the hard work of, either building a community using Web3 tools or joining yeah. communities using Web3 tools, right? Um, so you want to participate in communities that use these tools because you're going to learn in a way that you wouldn't learn. Um, you, you know, you get to that hands-on sort of learning experience. The example that I give is when the internet was first getting going, um, it was helpful for newspapers to talk about it. It was helpful to hear about stuff on the radio. It was helpful for TV channels to, to cover and talk about the, the internet. But once you sort of, there was only a certain level, there's only a certain space of education and learning and growth that can happen in a, in an older medium. So in mm -hmm. order to go deeper in that next medium, you have to like, go into the medium. And so for the internet, it was, well, you should probably start a website. You should probably have a blog. You should try to optimize for search. You should have an email. Um, and for Web3 right now, it's, you know, 2017, it was, you need to get a wallet. You just need to buy cryptocurrency. And that like, <laughs> you're done. Like you're, that's yeah, about yeah. as far as you could go unless you, and then the next step was, oh, how do you build these, you know, 
this, how you learn code and all this stuff. But like for marketers and creators, 2017 wasn't really a great era for that. Fast forward to today, um, you know, we've token gated our community because we need an NFT to coordinate our and to organize ourselves. And by holding that NFT, it unlocks access to the Discord. Now, what's cool about that, and this is like the meta sort of strategy, is NFTs are like a social network. It's a social graph. So you and I hold the same NFT. We are connected on chain. But if a hundred of us hold the same NFT, that's a hundred people connected on chain. Yeah. And the cool thing about that is we can move around the internet of at least the internet that's built on blockchain <clears throat> or that ties into blockchain, like Facebook is building to tie into the blockchain. We can move around together as a tribe or as a community. <clears throat> so right now, you know, we're just in discord. And this is like a very rudimentary stage of our evolution in the space. We fast forward five years from now, what we're going to see is we're going to see a whole set of tools where we can just verify our community, our access to this community, because we hold this one NFT. For us, it's called the Sky Club. Um, and we can just access this world of, of, uh, of experiences. So the one liner, that was a lot, but the one yeah. line, the one liner here is in web two communities were built on platforms, right? Just communities, yeah. platforms and web three, the community is the platform, well, right? Yeah. The token is the platform. So the Sky Club NFT by itself is not the platform. But when 9,000 marketers hold it who 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 have a certain like collective mission, that becomes a platform. And what's cool about tokens uh, is that tokens actually capture the value of that platform or of that of that uh, social graph not as the value isn't sort of abstracted into this like um, company, if you will, right? Like, and here's another one-liner. So I'll give you two. These are your sound yeah. bites. You can break up. <laughs> the other uh, one-liner here is UGC. The new UGC is user-generated capital. And Web2 is user-generated content. Web3 mm -hmm. is user-generated capital. So if you have tokens are the platform and then those tokens capture the value of the platform you really have a new dynamic you have a new way of organizing people and people coming together and then where this gets into like this is where the world why the world's going to be just freaking crazy in five to ten years because people don't just aren't in just in one community they're usually in multiple communities and then you, so this means you're not going to hold one token. You're going to have multiple tokens. Mm -hmm. And so this is where you start to get these communities where a really cool analysis that's going to start to happen. And this is going to be, we just went from like 101 to like advanced strategy real quick. What's going to happen is as all of these communities start to get built out, we're going to start to see, you know, the Venn diagram of just overlapping circles. Yeah we're going to start to see where certain communities are starting to overlap. And then you've basically got really tight alignment between those communities, because we're basically saying, you know, what other tokens do, does a certain community hold? So one day we're going to run an analysis on sky club jump token holders, and we're going to go, Holy cow, 30% of our community holds X, Y, and Z token we are very aligned with that community because of that overlap. We should partner with that community and we should go accomplish something together that we both bring to the table that essentially the value capture comes back into the community, which is held in the token. Well, fascinating actually to, to hear you talk about that because if you just talk to people on the street about tokens and NFTs, they just see you know this small vision but if you see all the possibilities, you know, that are linked to that and how you see that the world can change one year 
in Web3, it's, you know, so much, th so many things can happen. In the beginning, you said about learning and also about you sharing stuff into the community about uh, things that you learn, tools and so yeah. on. But, uh, you know, how do you do that for yourself? Where do you get your information? Are you all the time, you know, spending time in other communities? Are you doing research? Uh, how do you get your, uh, your info? That's what I'm curious about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I do have to say, you know, our resources that are that I was spending all morning this morning organizing and putting into discord, a good portion of that was shared by members in the community in our discord. Right. And that's that collective knowledge coming together. And then I just do the really hard, like long work of organizing it and making it useful. Uh, but a good portion of that knowledge was shared by members of our community and discord. And then me uh, relentlessly spending the last year saving, because, you know, Discord's just a flood of information. I know. So this is me, think of me as like this meticulous farmer in like a garden where every single day I'm saving something. I'm saving it. I'm saving. I'm, I'm organizing it. And then when you, if, if you were to see the 200 sort of resources and how they're organized in our server, which I'm only... I'm maybe 25% of the way through. So it's only going to get even more like that's, that's a, a lot of what's been shared. And then me just doing the two years of just meticulous organizing and then putting it there. But to augment that um, uh, other discord communities have been incredibly helpful. So I'm a member of, of several and I come through those discords looking for stuff. Um, Twitter, you know, I've spent a lot of time organizing who I follow on Twitter and certain Twitter lists. And uh, and then podcasts like this are incredible because you get di a different kind of concept. Like we can mm -hmm. really talk through concepts here. It's harder to get those concepts in these communities. So I love sort of the, the pull between like, you know, these little gold little nuggets that you can find of like tools and articles and things sort of that are, are, are written and then just tools to use. But then in podcasts like this are, are very concept driven. So I love listening to podcasts. I also am always game to be on a podcast because one, I know how much I've learned from podcasts. Um, so I like to share that out. I also know how much work it takes to create a podcast um, and so I'm always excited to be <laughs> asked to be on one, considering how much work it takes to keep them alive, to edit them and to produce them. Um, so that's kind of the, the world. I will say the transition over the last two years is I spent way more time on Twitter and uh, YouTube in the early days. And now I spend way more time with um, in Discord and with podcasts. Okay. Yeah, I also seen evolution for myself since I started, you know, to dive into the Web3 space. I was not really active on Twitter and now I'm seeing that I'm through these events also. So the combination of meeting people and then following them in the Discord on Twitter or the other way around, meeting people in the Discord community. I mean, the rights community that uh, Mark Schaefer has started up and there I'm even organizing events in the metaverse with those people. And then, of course, we'll also be seeing them live on certain events. So then it will be like we know each other. I think for the gem community, you do this also sometimes or you plan to do that like real life events. Yeah, yeah, we we have done events. We do we'll do a lot more events coming up here uh, in the future. One of the things we're getting uh, close to launching is Jump News. Maybe by the time this comes out, it'll be live. I don't know how the how long before this episode airs. Two three weeks. It will be a couple of weeks. Yes. So so yeah. the thing is, a lot of people are interested to come on the podcast. So uh, <laughs> yeah, a couple of weeks. Yeah. So um, tw uh, right now, middle of December, uh, December fifteenth, we're targeting to launch Jump News. Okay. Which is basically a proper startup that sits alongside the community, um, and the idea for Jump News is that's actually a real business that's designed to, to make money. Um, and then a portion of the revenue generated will help support the community, right? Because the community is a 
big reason why even Jump News could even be successful as a business. Yeah. Um, and so you can imagine once we spin that up, the events side of what we do in the community actually gets turbocharged. Why? Because there's resources. There's like actual right now, the events that happen are just members of the community that want to host an event and they want to do something. And that's that will always be there. But there's also a certain level of, you know, once you want to get to a certain level of production, a little a certain level of sophistication, you have to have actual resources, meaning you have to pay people to do stuff. Yeah. Right? Um, and in order to do that, you know, where does that money come from? Either the people attending those events pay for it or there's a business model wrapped around the community um, and that business model benefits from that community support, whether it's word of mouth or it's just like advocating or just like the culture, like a community culture can just help a business exist just by giving it that that special sauce of, you know, life. Um, and so in that sense, that business can then carve off a portion of its revenues that support, you know, the community through events or learning or whatever the community needs to continue to make it a, a place where people want to spend time um, and they think is valuable. So yes, more, more events. Uh, events are a big part for the community where we want to go but we need a sustainable business model to of life. course that's what you said i was also thinking about jeff does a lot of stuff but, but for certain things you really need a team of course to to make exactly. thing, things happen eh? uh, one of the questions that i was asking myself too is because okay you have all this experience to to build this community if some someone is listening and said ah oh, for my niche i also want to do something you know, on Discord or in, in the Web3 space, how, what would you be your best advice to start community for themselves in their niche? Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, um, you know, Discord is not the place you want to start community. Um, it's a place where your community could eventually go if it makes sense for your community. Um, but the Jump community didn't start on Discord. I, I would say the Jump community um, really started as... Um, You know, it, it starts with a lot of one on one type of, of of relationship building. Right. But then at a certain point for that to kind of you got to bring people together. Right. And, and you have to have this like collective meeting where people come together. So that could be. And then a lot of times community used to start just at people's houses or at a coffee shop. Right. And so you think in like really simple terms like that oh, we're going to start this community and we're going to go down and we're going to meet at the local coffee shop every single, you know, Tuesday night. And we're going to mm -hmm. talk about whatever it is we're going to talk about. That's the start of a community. Now, when you go to the online world and some of these different types of topics, like you take me, for example, in Dallas, there really wasn't a big group of people. When I say big, like five to 10 people in 2019, 2020 that yeah, were marketers. Yeah that wanted to get together every week and talk about Web3. That's a big commitment. You can get a, a bunch of people together to talk about like something one time. But what I'm talking about here in terms of early built community building, how do you get a group of people, a small group, five to 10, to gather every single week for something, right? That topic, whatever your community is about. Um, that's, that's the magic. That's the first step. Right. And so you, you just kind of look at that and, and, you know, for the, for a lot of people, you know, the internet is really the place where you can find the five or 10 passionate people that sort of are around the globe. So, you know, it, it really does start with, um, Actually, and, and David Sachs outlines this huge sort of thought leader and community builder. I was just reading a post from him the other day. And I was when I read it, I was like, oh, that's exactly what I did. Um, uh, you know, community building starts with outreach to the people that you think should be in the community. So you're you're looking out into the world and you're going, you like what I like. I'd like to talk to you. You like what I like. I'd like to talk to you. And you're basically finding these people that are open to talking with you about 
like what you're interested in. And eventually you've kind of, you've, you've networked to a big enough size of people where you could invite them into some sort of a community experience. And so community can be as simple as two things in the online world, a Google calendar and a zoom call. That's it. That could be community right there. Every single week, a group of five, 10, 15, 20 people, they get together and they talk about a, a subject. So the, a couple of ways that we've talked about this in C club is, um, drum beats or heartbeats, right? And so when you're building a community, what's the drum beat or what's the heartbeat? They're kind of the same thing. It's just two ways to talk about it. Um, but if you can create a drum beat or a heartbeat, and that's that regular meeting that people get together, you will eventually a, a, a more robust thing will form that we typically think of as communities. Uh, but the whole reason Jump was able to get to where it is, which is you know, th thousands of, of members with uh, several, several hundred passionate NFT holders um, is because from day one, we were having regular uh, weekly meetings of bringing people together. Right. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's amazing. Listen to how, we, you know, you just take the right action, focus, know who you want to have in the community. Actually, a bit like I did with my podcast, I was just yep. saying to someone, you, are, I saw you on stage, I like you on stage, like others, like I, hear, I heard you talk, you, I want your energy, your story on my podcast, because I like what you're saying, or when I'm connecting to people. That's how it works on my side. Um, perhaps one and of... And that, yeah. that's great. like that. So you're making those one on one connections. You're doing very early stage. You, you could turn, you know, go down the community path. You're also creating content along those connections. So that's really good, too. I think a mistake that a lot of people make when they want to build uh, a community is they think they need to start with content. And that they need to broadcast their ideas and become this massive content machine to pull that community in. It's actually the opposite. You need to start with one-on-one -on -one connections and build a really, really great one-on-one -on -one sort of network in these relationships. And then you need to start to bring people together and then you can create content on top of it. Now, in your case, you're kind of, you can, you're doing content and the one-on-one -on -one connections at the same time. So there's totally, you know, you can knock out two birds with one stone, but the more important piece is the one-on-one -on -one connections. So if you look at the evolution of jump new or jump, you have me 15 years building relationships, right? I building my community for 15 mm -hmm. years. Work. Um, then a really targeted outreach of like, do you like these ideas? Are you thinking about this stuff? Whether it's people in my that I knew previously, or I founded them on Twitter, then creating that regular uh, meeting, then allowing for other people to come in, layering some technology of NFTs. And as I mentioned earlier, with the launch of Jump News, content, right? So content's last. Whoa. Lots of value, lots of value bombs. Thank, <laughs> Thank you so much, Jeff. It, it makes me think, you know, I'm very... I must be already doing something right because the podcast is really yes. growing as I want. I connect with people. I'm kind of building a big community. Yeah. I also have my NFT. You know, I'm doing stuff, but it's step by step, of course, yeah. that, I, that I'm learning. Also, every time I, I, I talk to people like you, having people on my podcast, every time it goes like, okay, I go a step further. So mm -hmm. thank you so much. It was great to have you. But if people want to connect with you, Jeff, or they want to know more about the GEM community, where would you send them? Absolutely. So a uh, couple URLs, jumpcommunity.xyz. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Jeff Kaufman Jr. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn, obviously. And then depending on when this podcast airs, um, at some point on jumpnews.xyz, there will be a beautiful new Web3 enabled media property. There's nothing at the domain right now. Uh, so you might hear this before anything goes live, but that will be uh, a really fun project that will essentially be two years of uh, the accumulation of two years of work starting to come to life. Exciting.
Yeah, guys, you know, if you are listening to this podcast episode, there is an article linked to this episode where you can read everything. You'll find also the show notes and everything, all the links in there. So be sure to check it out. Be sure also to check out Jeff's social media. Be sure to check out the, the, the Jump Club, the Jump Community, sorry, the Sky Club, and so on. If you got value out of this episode, and I'm sure you have, be sure to share it with other marketers around you that are interested in Web3. They will be grateful for you. And then they can also check out the Jump community and so on. And then the community can get bigger and get bigger and can learn from each other. Also, if you aren't already subscribed to the podcast, be sure to do that. And yes, of course, I would like to see you back for the next podcast episode. Bye. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.